Hello everybody, welcome to Alan Wall's Photography. We're going to start out today's video with a quiz. It's a single question. From what height do you need to drop an LNIC or 50mm enlarger lens for it to break into two pieces? You have eight seconds. You aren't even close. Three feet, three and a half inches. I know, I saw it happen. A couple of weeks ago, my fat little fingers failed to hold on to my uh, L nickel and it went skittering across the table, dropped under the force of gravity to the ground and was torn asunder into two pieces. I couldn't put it back together. I've sent it to a friend of mine uh, who claims to fix lenses, though he's never returned any of the lenses I've ever sent him. I think he just sells them. But uh, anyway, I don't think I'll ever see this again. So I immediately, before my tears were dry, ordered another one. I ended up buying another one from the same person I bought the last one from. So he is a reliable source and I'm happy to say the lens arrived. Not only did it arrive, it's cold down here by the way, and my package was delivered yesterday. And when I went outside to get it, sitting on top of the box, frozen and totally dead, was one of the biggest, prettiest looking leaf leg bugs I have ever seen. It's enormous for down here. I thought for one minute that maybe the mailman was, was thinking back about the last year of all the stuff he'd broken of mine by throwing it at my front door. Yeah, you know, as he was walking up, he thought, you know, I should do something nice for Alan. Let me go catch him a nice big bug to put on this box, which probably has a lens in it. That's a bit far-fetched, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he didn't do that, but the, the bug was there. And one of the first things I do when I get a new lens, after thoroughly examining it, checking all the moving parts, looking at the glass, I slap it onto the camera and I take pictures. And, and it was as if Providence had killed this poor chap right on top of my lens the day I was going to test it. So even though I talk about this lens a lot, it occurred to me that I'd never actually dedicated a video to the lens, how I set it up, the modifications I make to it, the, the camera setup I use it with. And I thought that that's what I could do today. Two quick things before we get started. The first is thank you, thank you, thank you to my Patreon supporters and to the donors through my website. I really appreciate your help, guys. I really do. The second thing is, if you've ever been looking for something that I had done, some video or a written article or, or any content that I've created on any subject and you've had a hard time finding it, now you can go over to my website. The link is right here. It'll take you to the videos page of my website and there's a search box there now. Uh, and uh, just type in the words you're looking for and it will take you to any videos or articles that I've done on the subject. The L Nickel 50mm f2.8N is one of the most versatile lenses you'll ever use in macro photography. It's a, an enlarger lens, obviously. It's uh, six elements in four groups, and uh, it's made of a, a metallic housing. It does have a plastic outer part, uh, which is breakable from three feet, three and a half inches. It has a manual aperture ring, which makes it the ideal bellows lens. Get to that in a second too. Uh, it uh, has a, a maximum aperture of f2.8 and a minimum of f16. The diaphragm has eight blades in total. What makes this lens different than the slightly older and slightly less expensive uh, f2.8 as opposed to 2.8N, is this has some additional coatings uh, on, on the front and rear element. It has a filter ring of 40.5 millimeters on the front, and uh, it mounts to your camera or your bellows uh, with a 39 millimeter thread. If you're using this lens as a macro lens at 
any magnification less than about one-to-one, -one, it's best to use it in its normal orientation with the skinny end pointing towards the camera. If, however, you're using it as a macro lens at one-to-one -one or anything greater, you really need to use it reversed. That's critical. One of the features of the f2.8n is this aperture window. And this thing is set up so that light will shine through it from inside the lens so that it illuminates the numbers so that you can see what you're selecting, which I guess is good if you're using this as an enlarger lens, but it can be problematic and can cause light leaks. Now the older lens, the f2.8, which was a solid metal lens, does not have the illuminated dial. Once I have my aperture set where I want it, I take a piece of my Gorilla tape that goes everywhere with me and I seal off that window uh, that illuminates the dial because otherwise light can get back in, can set up some ugly internal reflections. I basically leave mine on 5.6 with this tape in place all the time. I really never change it. If you want to mount this thing in the regular orientation onto your camera or onto your bellows, all you need is an M39 to uh, an F mount, in this case, adapter. To, they're not that hard to find. If you can't get your hands on one of those for any reason, you can also just use an M39 to uh, 52 millimeter uh, step up ring and then attach that to a regular reversing ring and uh, you'll be good to go. But like I say, if you're gonna be using this for magnification, then you really need to concern yourself with mounting it in reverse because that's the way you're gonna to want to do it. So the ideal way to mount this lens in reverse is to just use a simple F mount to M40.5 adapter. A few Chinese dealers do carry them, uh, and I've ordered a couple in the past and they never arrived. So um, I, I came up with a system that works just as well. I use a, a stepping ring, which is 40.5 that steps up to 52 millimeters. Now, because this is a step up ring, it means that this adapter has a male thread. In order to match the male thread to the male thread of the F mount reversing ring, seen here, we need an intermediate. And I use a 52 to 58 millimeter step up ring because it has a continuous internal 52 millimeter thread. So I can simply mount the other adapter directly onto it. And that's all I need to mount this in reverse on my bellows or on my camera if I so wanted to. Now, special attention has to be given to the back of the lens, the part of the lens that's facing your subject. Now, your working distance is never gonna be much more than about 40 millimeters, even when you're maxed out on magnification. So we have a little bit of room in front of the lens to work with. While these lenses are not prone to flare, I still find the quality of my images improve significantly when I hood the rear of the lens. Now, to do that, I have come up with a very uh, complicated uh, arrangement. The first thing I use is a simple adapter that goes from 39 millimeters to F mount. You could probably do this just with uh, some extension tubes but the extension tubes are kind of bulky and uh, they get in the way a little bit. So the solution I've come up with is to use the remarkable BR3 adapter, which has a female F mount on one side. So that will just, that will just uh, fit snugly onto the, what is now the front of the lens. And then I use a series of, uh, of uh, step down rings. Actually, it's a, a 52 to 43 step down, and then attached to that is a 43 to 52 step back up. And then on the front is another 52 to 43 ring that I had lying around. So it gives me an extra almost centimeter of 
lens hood. I don't know if you can see that clearly, but uh, that is a nice deep uh, lens hood. So that's the way I set it up. And I, I strongly recommend you do something like this. I found that just leaving the BR3 does not protect me when my flashes are coming in from the side. It may look like just details, but these little three um, adapter rings make all the difference in the world. I really love this setup. It works perfectly. Let's talk for a minute about apertures. I recommend you leave the aperture at 5.6. At f4 or wider, you tend to, to see more chromatic aberration towards the center of the, the image, and the center becomes a little soft. The one exception to the f5.6 rule is if you want to shoot with the lens as a macro lens at say one to one or one and a half to one magnification, which means for one thing, it couldn't be on a bellows because the amount of extension a collapsed bellows gives is more than the extension you need to get one to one, which is only about 20 millimeters. So you would attach this to the camera to get that kind of uh, uh, minimal extension. But if you're going to go at lower magnification, it's worth closing down the aperture to about f8. It'll give you more central sharpness, and it'll also give you a little bit more sharpness towards the edges, and it's pretty noticeable. So the rule of thumb is, unless you're shooting at low magnification, leave the aperture set at f5.6. Let's talk a minute about extension. At the lowest magnifications, shoot with extension down around 20 or 30 millimeters. That'll give you one to one. If you want to shoot around two to one, you need about 80 millimeters of extension from the sensor. And if you want to get all the way to four to one, it'll be close to 200 millimeters of total extension. You've probably heard me say on multiple occasions that if I'm shooting at anything greater than three and a half to one magnification, I use a, a microscope objective. One of the reasons for that is as you get up to around three and a half times magnification, you're no longer gaining anything in, in terms of resolution. Your picture is bigger, but it's not more resolved. And that's, that's what's called empty magnification. And I think the meaningful magnification only goes to about three and a half, which is why for anything closer than that, I'm gonna to switch to a microscope objective. By the way, at one-to-one, -one, your working distance is about uh, 100 millimeters, which is huge um, <laughs> compared to some of the lenses that we use. So you've got plenty of room for lighting. If you go up to two-to-one, you have about 50 or 60 millimeters to work with, which is still gigantic compared to an objective. Once you push this all the way to four to one, you only have about 30 or 40 millimeters to work with. And you've got to remember, we've got about 20 millimeters of lens hood here. So you start to get pretty close and lighting becomes a little trickier. Another reason why I don't really push this beyond about three and a half to one. So what is it about this lens that I love so much? Well, the perfect example was shooting my friend from uh, that the postman left me the other day. One of the things I like to do when I'm uh, shooting a new insect, I like to use different magnifications. I like to get as much of the creature in the frame as possible with low magnification, say one to two or thereabouts. But at the same time, I also want to, to get good sharp images of eyes and antennas and feet and whatever else is interesting about the, the creature. I can do all of that with an L neck or 50 millimeter f 2.8 N just by changing my extension. If you see one of these lenses or something that looks very much like it, uh, an L neck or 50 millimeter f four in larger lens, don't buy it. It's absolutely rubbish. So to sum up, to get the most out of your Elnick or 50 millimeter F 2.8 N, 
mount the lens in reverse for anything greater than one to one. Shoot at f5.6 unless you're at very low magnifications and then you can bump it up to eight. Build and always use some type of a lens hood. I recommend at least 20 millimeters. Cover the self-illuminated aperture dial so that you don't get loss of contrast from light pollution coming in through there. And finally, if you're going to drop one of these on the floor, do it from less than three feet, three and a half inches. I don't know how much less, but definitely less than that. So in case you hadn't guessed, I love this lens. This is the only lens that I recommend to everybody who does macro photography. Thank you very much for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, and ringing the bell. Coming up next, I'm gonna show you how to build your very own insect restoration and preservation laboratory in a shoebox. I am going to leave you with some of the test images that I shot with my new lens of the gift the postman left me.